Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. In the previous video, we have started talking about vitamin B1, also known as thiamine or TPP, thiamine pyrophosphate. Today, we'll talk about one of the things that can happen if you have vitamin B1 deficiency, which is Wernicke's encephalopathy. Speech as a brain function requires two things. First, production of language, aka talking, that's a motor function for you to move your lips and move all of your muscles and actually freaking talk. And then it also requires comprehension of language or understanding so that when I talk nonsense right now, you can actually freaking understand me. This is a sensory function. All right, fine. How about the motor function? Who is responsible for that? An area in your brain called Broca's area. This Broca's area is also known as area 44 and 45 according to Broadman map or Broadman areas. Broadman is the scientist who actually mapped the areas in your brain. And how I remember it is Broca with the B is same as buckle, which is your mouth, so to speak. And in Spanish, mouth is boca. Okay, I get that. How about comprehension? How about actually understanding? This is Wernicke's area or area 22. And the way I remember it is Wernicke, what are you saying? What are you saying? It's the comprehension. It's the sensation. It's actually making sense of what you said. So many students actually get confused about the different areas of the brain when in fact it's very easy. It's just your professor who is so fake he cannot even find his butt with both hands and not explain it to you. So listen sunshine, there is the brain. You can actually divide it with an imaginary line so that the front is responsible for motor generally speaking and the back is responsible for sensory generally speaking. Let's talk about Broca's area responsible for motor function, actually the ability of you to move your mouth your lips and your facial muscles to actually freaking speed as well as the vocal cords so do you think this is a motor function or a sensory function it's a motor function and that's why believe it or not Broca's areas is here it's in the anterior half it's here a motor function how about me understanding what you're saying Wernicke's area do you think this is motor or sensory sensory so it's gonna be in the back believe it or not it's about right here this is Wernicke's area how about um, frontal eye field, the area of my cortex that responsible for the movement, the movement of my eye muscles. Do you think it's going to be in the front or in the back? You guessed it. And here is motor or frontal eye field or motor area eight. How about the vision itself? Not the eye movement, but the vision, the ability of my retina and my optic nerve to actually freaking recognize what I'm seeing. Do you think it's a motor function or a sensory function? Uh, similar to perception, so this is a sensory function. That's why the area of your cortex is called the visual cortex that responsible for the vision is actually in the back because it's a sensory, so it's in the back, it's not in the front. Let's say I want to kick you in the butt, metaphorically speaking. I will not, I will never do that because I love you. If I want to kick you in the butt, I will use my primary motor cortex right here. Let's say you poked me with a stick or with a pin or whatever. And I sense, ouch, this is, this hurts. Do you think it's more or sensory? It's sensory. So it's here, baby. It just makes sense if you understand what the flip you're talking about. Now, medicosis, I get what you're trying to say. But I still can't tell why Broca is here. Why not here, 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 or here? Okay, what is Broca responsible for? Uh, it's responsible for understanding what I hear from you. What you what? What I hear from you. So it's related to the ear. Yes, the ear is about right here, baby. It's here. So Broca's area is very just, just next to the ear. Makes perfect sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Do not expect to hear that from your professor anytime soon. Now we know about Broca's area and Wernicke's area. How about the problems, the pathology? Let's talk pathology. It's called aphasia. What does aphasia mean? A in Greek means no, and phasia means utterance. So in brief, aphasia is a Greek word which means shut up. You can shut up your mouth or shut up your understanding. Wow, this is profound. When you shut up your mouth, you cannot talk. This is a problem in Broca's area. So this is an aphasia, but this is called non-fluent aphasia because you are not fluent anymore. You cannot talk. Contrast that with Wernicke's aphasia. You have fluent aphasia. You are able to talk, 
but you cannot comprehend. That's why we also call it receptive aphasia. The problem is in the reception, the sensory, the sensation, making sense of what you hear. Let's talk about Wernicke's area. It's in the superior temporal gyrus, is also known as parietotemporal junction between the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. And this is in the dominant cerebral hemisphere. In other words, if you are right-handed, you will find Wernicke's area in the left hemisphere. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why the right side of the brain supplies the left side of the body. If you have an answer, please let me know. Next, it encircles the auditory cortex. Yes, indeed, because after you listen, you should freaking understand. Nice. It's responsible for word and sentence comprehension. The lesion to Wernicke's area will lead to receptive aphasia, also known as fluent aphasia, because you can still talk also known as sensory aphasia. Problems in Wernicke's area will lead to inability to understand spoken or written language. Therefore, you will have inability to express yourself in a meaningful way. An analogy here is something called deaf mutism. Young kids who cannot hear also cannot speak. You might think, oh, why? It's just the problem with their hearing. Yes, because how you learn to speak comes from your hearing. You have to hear first in order to learn how to talk. Same thing happens with Wernicke's aphasia. You have lost your ability to comprehend. You cannot make sense of the words. Therefore, you'll be unable to actually form some coherent sentences that make sense to other. Does that make sense? So the patient is fluent, he can talk, he can say words, but circumlocutious. Just learned this word the other day. Wow, what a description. The patient, by the way, is unaware that he or she has a problem. We call this egocentonic. Ego is self. Syntonic is like in synchrony. The patient actually believes that he's okay, he's fine. Contrast that with something else called ego dystonic. Dystonia is like an abnormality. Ego dystonic is when a patient has a disorder that he is aware that he has a problem. But the patient with Wernicke's encephalopathy or Wernicke's aphasia actually thinks that he's awesome and he has no problem whatsoever. And he gets frustrated if you, as a doctor, try to treat him as a patient because he thinks that he's the best ever. Now, how does this circumlocution actually sound like? Now I'll try to be a Wernicke's aphasia patient and you will hear it. I'm not making fun of patients. I'm just trying to make medicine easy for you so that you can diagnose and actually help patients. And here it goes. Okay, Mr. Smith, how is your daughter? Uh, my daughter, there are many problems that we have today in the Obama-Trump economy. I love strawberry. My daughter works at Starbucks. Um, every day she makes pizza and sells it to her customers. Pluto is not a planet in our solar system. My pleasure. I couldn't find my bottle of medication this morning. 100% chance of rain and humidity. Foolishness, you know, Doc. I always felt lonely in my life. My daughter doesn't like working as a nurse. I've told you. I've never had sex before. I cannot speak English. Can you believe that the price of tomato doubled over the past two potatoes? Nonsense. I told Alex to floss. Marie Antoinette never existed. I couldn't find my car in the bedroom. See? I've told you. Vanity of vanities. She doesn't like cappuccinos. I told her to quit. Uh, she can't find my uh, motorcycle in the living room. The zombie apocalypse is a documentary. I don't like the nine judges of the Supreme Congress. How are you doing today? You love frappuccino? Fluent but circumlocutious. Voluminous but uninformative. In the previous video called vitamin B1 deficiency, which by the way, you should watch, I've told you that vitamin B1 deficiency can lead to three diseases. Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, biotin thiamine responsive basal ganglia disease, and beriberi. Today we have talked about Wernicke. In the next video, we'll talk about Korsakoff syndrome, also known as Korsakoff psychosis. I think you should get my electrolytes course, which contains 19 videos plus 10 cases with answers. It's available on my website called medicosisperfectionalist.com and use this promo code to get 60% off this order. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on all of these platforms and you can get my course. You can get notes. You can get cases. You can get one-on-one -on -one mentorship with yours truly. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. 
This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, you might have Wernicke's aphasia.